I'm Stephen Graham, author of the book I'm a Gun. This book was written to highlight the psychological hold guns have over our youths. Inspired by the book, I felt compelled to make this documentary. This documentary analyzes and scrutinizes gun crime, highlights the importance of black history, reflects on the hold that the streets have on our youth, and explores how miseducation is affecting our people. Here's a sneak preview of what to expect. Don't criminalize poverty, don't criminalize the situations that create poverty. So creating crime is creating the conditions that are gonna breed crime. When we went to school, there was, we didn't actually find that we fitted in British society. There was no knowledge of who we were. There was no knowledge of what our parents had accomplished and the type of people that came from the Caribbean. So therefore, we were literally rejected, to be honest with you. My brother Jada, Jada so said to me once, and it stuck with me, he said, when I was 15, I believed if I didn't go to jail, I wasn't a real black boy. And can you imagine that? A guy's grown up in a society, and he thinks that his identity as a young black male, if he doesn't go to prison, not fulfilling and what does that do to you when you think being a young black man is back there in prison? When I was young growing up, I couldn't wait. I was like, yo, I'm going to prison straight. Uh, I'm being young. I just thought, I'm going to school, I'm going to drop low people and I'm definitely going to go to prison without a doubt. I knew I was going to prison. It just was about like, when? You might be in control of, of your, your action, but it's your mind state that's going to determine that that action, if you know what I mean. Are you in control of your mind state? Gun crime, oh look, it's going to get you in pen. And when you're there, you're 30 years, you're going to think, oh, imagine if I had another chance. To see some of these young people after they've done the act, then they've been arrested, incarcerated, they're literally sitting there with their head in their hands, wondering what happened. But like these people are fighting over postcodes, and they don't own nothing in the postcode. They don't own the house they live in. I mean, they're renting. So what happens when they move? So the fact that at the moment you're fighting for Hackney because you're living in like a heat. So what happens when you move to West London? What, you change the post you fight for it? Dumb. Stupid, man. I see another group of black youths. I've got a problem with them, not for any particular reason. They might be from Hackney, I might be from Tottenham, they might be from Stonebridge, I might be from Church Road. And we're fighting over pieces of real estate that we don't even own. We need to turn this around. We need to let our children know the power they have and know how important they are. Well, you see me, yeah, like, I'm not even really on the like, hype team and all that. Like, I know a lot of people that's kind of went that road and that, and you got themselves in big problems. You, get, you can't even take their youth to the park and shit like that, you get me? Automatically, we're killing ourselves, innit? That's just like the bottom line, innit? We're killing ourselves, innit? Boy, this, it's a one way street, really, you get me? Like, it's, it's, probably, it's probably a bag of men that got into it, that want to get out of it, but once you're in it, it's a bit hard to get out of here, you get me? You usually end up in jail, dead, or you're just paranoid, isn't it? You're always looking over your shoulder, you don't know who this man is. Man looking for more than two seconds, you're thinking it. it's someone you've got problems with, you get me? And that's another thing, people glorify it and they talk about it, and it's the latest gossip of who's been shot and this and that. And to me, it's, it's a lot more than that. It's someone's son that's just been killed, it's someone's father that's just been killed, someone's grandson. You're sitting there thinking that you're, that you're missing out because they're getting dull or whatever, or they're getting all some sort of hype when you've got to come together, they've got beer stories to tell you. But really, truly, when five years on, they've gone in jail, come out of jail, gone in jail, come out of jail, then they're talking about, oh, I want to go into college. You've done college already. I'm saying there's hardly anyone that told you they was successful from selling drugs or shooting people and they, and they end up successful. That doesn't happen. They end up in jail or dead. This is, that's the real, the real facts of it. In order to be in total control, you must have a knowledge of yourself. Crud niggas on the block are capable of getting their education to the highest mass, you know? Like, why have to be in jail doing an L play to do that? Some of the rules don't really make sense anymore, to be honest with you. But the initial thing was sparked off that could have been some little idiot thing. And if you was in your right state of mind, you could have let that fly and squash that. And we could, you get me, we could just be reasoning as big man and weary, but instead now we're worried. You see a man, your uncle or someone go to prison, come out hench, and everyone giving ratings. Yo, big man, you're like, yo, my man's got muscles, my man's hard, my man's getting his new car, he's got a sexy girl, like, raw, oh, he's got ratings, and you just see that as, yo, that's a, that looks like a good thing. That's how, that's how lost we was as a people. Let them know that we love ourselves. Look at your children, look at your community. Your community is a reflection of you. The chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Yeah, yeah, I was in pen, I was in pen. They use it like it's a calling card, like it's cool. It's
it's cool to go to jail. Why not get a degree in it? Why not stay up in university or I'm a CEO or I work in a company? Go back down to lack of education, um, lack of love for each other, we do not understand. We do not know ourselves. So how can we, if we don't know ourselves, how do we expect someone that looks like us? We don't, we don't, we don't understand love, we don't understand none of that.